Welcome to your D132 Typography 1 to our first hands-on assignment, and this will be pretty easy. It's kind of a cross between learning to use Gravit a little bit and also getting used to font categories. What you're going to do first in my warn is go to Documents and Resources, and the only handout that I have up here right now is Gravit Fonts, and you could just click on it. It'll open up in a new tab, and we're just going to look at some of these fonts. Archivo, Libre Franklin, Crimson Pro, EB Garamond, uh, one of the scripts, Zilla Slab, and one of the decorative ones. So we'll just choose one of those. But you could keep this open if you need to. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to Coursework, and you're going to go down in Unit 1, and you're going to click on this exercise. Well, actually, you don't have to click on the exercise. You can actually just click on this link. This is a shared link, and you'll see what happens. It's basically a file that I'm sharing with you that you're going to save into your account. Hopefully you already watched the Gravit account video and created an account. So that's kind of what this is made to do after that, but I'm going to click on this. Now, if you're not logged in, if you're not technically logged in or you logged out the last time you were using it, it may look like this. And if not, it'll just log into your account. Now, it's not in my account right now, so I have to log in. So I'm just going to click on Log In. And again, if you don't see that, it means you're already logged in and you should be okay. So I'm just going to log in, and I'm just going to use my Gmail account. So I'm kind of like a student, and I'll just click on Log In. And now I'm logged in. And basically, that means you can save this file as your own, and that's the whole point. I'm sharing it with you. So right now, it says last name, EX1 font categories, last name F. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to File, Save to Cloud As. Now, the first thing I'd recommend to do is click on New Folder. Now, if you're in another class like Graphic Design 1, you can make a 131 folder. You can make a 130 folder if you're in History of Graphic Design. And for this class, you can make a file that's called GRD132. And I'll just make a folder. It doesn't matter if it's caps, lowercase. And I'll just hit Create. And there it is, and it's in my cloud. So I'm going to click on it so I know I'm in that folder, and there's nothing here. Now, down here at the bottom where it says last name F, I'm going to change that to my name, and you would change it to your name. So I'll just put HOMA R because that's me. And it's EX1 font categories dash HOMA R or your last name first initial. Now, for some reason when you do that, it doesn't show a save here. So if you just hit enter, hit your enter key and it'll save it. So now it's saved in my account. There's my little icon there. Wait till it syncs. It'll take a few seconds to sync. Now it's synced up. It's not bouncing around. And that's the file you have open in here. And again, it's called EX1 Font Categories, and what you'll see is there'll be one layer called Labels. That's this thing, and it's locked right now, so you shouldn't be able to... Oh, you can click on it. So actually, let me lock it. If, you, if it opens like this, just lock the whole layer. Just go into Labels and go on this lock thing and just lock it, because we don't want to do anything on that layer. We don't want to be touching any of these. So if I forgot to do that, that's actually good. Now you learn how to lock that Labels layer, so make sure it's a dark gray lock like that, and that you can't click on any of those things. So there'll be one text layer and that's this one right here that's the text layer and it says the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and if you're not familiar with that saying it basically uses all the letters in the alphabet and then I also have some capital letters here that are very distinctive based on each font that you use and you could zoom into this so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and actually what we're gonna wanna do once we zoom in so you can see it nice and big is hide this part over here now we're going to be changing fonts over here, but on this side we don't really need to do anything else after you lock that. So I'm going to go to View, and where it says Show Layers Panel, that's what this thing is, the Layers Panel. Just uncheck that. And then you'll have more room to zoom in. And if you're wondering how I'm zooming in, on a Mac I'm using Command Plus, and on a Windows you can use Control Plus. And that'll help you zoom in. And that's probably enough for now. You can still, I could pinch my fingers and zoom in and zoom out like that. There's different ways to do it. However you normally zoom is fine. But I'm going to go up here and just kind of look at this first thing. And maybe I'll zoom out just a little bit. I don't need to zoom in that much. But I just want to see the whole line. And I just want to look at this font. And there's some characteristics about the font. I'll notice the G doesn't have any lines coming down. It's a fairly narrow font. And if I click on it, I just want to point this out. If I click on it with my arrow, that's what I'm using, my pointer tool. If I click on it, the whole box will be selected. And that's the text box. Now you could double click and go inside here and highlight words. If I highlight that, I could see it's in 24 pixels or 24 point. If I double click on here, I could see these letters are in 36 point. And I'm going to leave them as they are right now. But I am going to change the font, and I'm going to change the font of the whole text box at one time. So I'm going to click off and click on, so I click on the box. So what I'm going to do with this font is I'm going to make this a serif font. It says serif over here, so I'm going to make it serif. So if I look at my serif fonts, even though I have sans serif first, 
I'm going to make my first one Crimson Pro. And it's very gouty-ish, it says. So I'm going to make sure I click on here so that the whole box is selected. And I'll go to the drop-down right here in this arrow. And what you could do is start typing in CRI. And Crimson Pro and Crimson Text comes up here. We're going to select Crimson Pro. And make sure you click on it. And it's a serif font. And you could zoom in here, but you can kind of look from here. Where I am, I could see that the Q has a has a long thingy that hangs here. <laughs> and this thingy kind of comes out. Now, that's why we're going to learn anatomy. So we're not using terms like thingy and stuff like that. So we know how to use the right terminology. Not that you're going to remember everything, but the leg of the R kind of comes out. If you zoom in here, you could see the leg of the R. You could see it's kind of rounded on the bottom. You could see it doesn't have little pointy things on the top of that. And we'll, we'll learn the terminology for that as well. But this is a very nice font. So this is a very nice serif font to start off with. So that's why I'm having us use Crimson Pro. And all we need to do is look at it. And I'm going to make a copy of it. And we'll make a second serif font just because there's tons of serif fonts. And we just want to look at the difference between two. So what you could do to copy this, you can do edit duplicate. You can go over to, I believe, edit, and they have duplicate. Now keep in mind, if you select duplicate, it puts it right on top. So it's kind of confusing that you made a copy. But if you drag it, you could see I made a copy. That's one way to duplicate something. You could also select it with your pointer and do Command D or Control D on Windows. That'll make a copy too, and it'll still put it right on top, and you just have to move it. Another way to copy things, which I'm going to use from now on, is I'm going to select this with my pointer, and I'm going to hold down my Alt key on Windows or my Option key on Mac, and I'm just going to drag down, and it'll make a copy. Now, that's called a drag copy or an Alt drag or an Option drag, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just moving this down, and notice when you move around, you could sometimes line things up with other stuff on the page, but I'm just going to move it down so that the top line is close to where it says serif, and I'm going to change this serif to be E.B. Garamond. I think that's our other one we're going to use, E.B. Garamond. So I'll go back here. And remember, this text box is selected. And I'm going to go in here and just type in E.B. And the only one that comes up is E.B. Garamond. And that's it. And you can see it's similar, but not the same. It has thinner kind of areas in the font. The G is a little bit different. So it's a little lighter overall. There's thinner areas in it. If you look at the W's, you can see this has a connected W, meaning that it looks like two V's that are joined. This looks like two V's that are crossed over. You can see on the serifs at the top, they point up a little bit, and we'll talk about what they are. And the Q, the little thingy that comes down along the bottom, which we'll discuss what that is called, is longer. So that's an E.B. Garamond. It's very similar, but they're both nice fonts for us to use. This is a little more condensed, it seems. It seems a little bolder, too, a little heavier. I guess if you kind of squint your eyes and look back. So they're two very nice fonts that we could use. And the reason that we have these serif fonts picked out is because when you go on here, they have a nice family of fonts. Look at that. It goes all the way from extra light up to heavy. So it has a nice big family of fonts, and that's what we want. We don't just want to hit the B button and the I button, things like that that you've done in the past with Word. You want to make sure you're using all the fonts from the font family. They're all separate fonts. So these, we call them styles, but they're all separate fonts actually. So having a nice family of fonts is very nice to have. You have a lot of flexibility with fonts. Let's see what the Garamond has. And that has a lot of styles too. It has regular, medium, semi-bold, bold, and then it has all the italics in there. So that's a nice family of fonts as well. So those are serif fonts, and you know they're serif fonts because they have the little serifs on them. And you should know that already. And now we're going to move on to sans serif. So you could copy the previous one, and I'll do a drag copy. And I'll change this one to Archivo, because in our list, Archivo was the first one. We're going to use Archivo and Libri of the sans serifs. And I should have put sans serif first. But anyway, we're going to use Archivo. So in here, you can type in Archivo, I think. Is it coming up? You have to hit the drop down for it to let you choose things. So now it's coming up with Archivo when I click in there, and there's Archivo. So sometimes you have to mess around with this a little bit. And Ar Archivo is nice because it's very much like Helvetica, or, or even Arial in a way. It has a black font, a real heavy font. It has a narrow font, more of a condensed font. And it has a regular family of regular fonts, which we're going to use right here. So I'm just going to click on Archivo. And we're just looking at the standard one. You can see it's wider, so you might want to move these things over a little bit so they're 
a little bit centered because this is going to be a lot wider because they have a lot bigger lowercase fonts. You could see that the ratio between the capital letters and the lowercase letters is a lot less, I guess you could say that, meaning the X height is bigger. These have large lowercase letters so they take up more space. They're easier to see from far away. That's why you'll see them on road signs and things like that. This is a sans serif font. It's a lot easier to read at small sizes. So you'll see sans serif fonts at the back of products, all the small print, fine print on the back of anything is going to be in a sans serif font. So this is our Archivo, which is a lot like Helvetica, and I'm just going to compare it to a different one. So I'll do a drag copy again, and I'll just bring this whole box down here. And this one I'm going to change to Libre Franklin. So it's a lot like Franklin Gothic. So when this is highlighted, I'm going to type in Libre, and there's a whole bunch of Libres, but I'm going to choose Libre Franklin. And you can see it's very similar if I move over here. A lot of similarities between Quick quick they almost look the same brown and brown a little bit lighter looks a little little lighter than the one above and it almost looks like this one's squashed down a little bit and this one's a little more taller in a way now the R's look very similar except this is a little wider this is a little thinner Q's this one has a little curl this one has a straight line coming out from it the G's look pretty similar other than these are a little narrower and the A's have that little kind of top on the A's. And again, we'll talk about all the terminology, but I don't want to get into that yet. I'll just look at it in a, like a layman right now. We'll just, we'll use thingies and things sticking out just so you know what I'm talking about right now. If you look at the S, you can see this S curls down and it kind of goes across kind of horizontally, almost like it's cut on a horizontal line. This one almost looks like it's cut on a diagonal. Like that so it's a little more open so the C is a little more open this C is a little more closed so some of those things you should be just taking notes of early on before you before we start to study this in more depth so that is Libre Franklin the next one you're gonna do is we're just gonna use a slab serif so I'm just gonna do a drag copy of this one and I'm gonna change this one to Zilla so if you just go on here and type Z Zilla should come up because there's not many Z's so here's Zilla slab I'll just use that and I'll move it over a little bit and this is a slab serif font, so I'll zoom in a little bit and you can see the difference. They have very kind of flat serifs on them, as opposed to these which are kind of sharper and they kind of taper down. Slab serif fonts are a little more blocky. And when they get bold, they get very blocky. So if I had changed this whole thing to a bold, you can see they get very heavy and very blocky kind of fonts, kind of like collegiate type letterings on athletic wear, things like that, the numbers on the back of a jersey. So that's a slab serif font. And you'll see a lot more of these on the web now, particularly in headlines, but you'll also see body copy, some of it with some slab serif fonts, as long as they're light enough. I'll zoom out a little bit more. And then the next one I'll do here, we just have two more and then we'll be done. So I'm just gonna make a copy here and I'll just choose a script font. Now we have a whole list of script fonts as you go down here, here's script. And I put everything that's either handwritten, scripty, they could be very formal, they could be casual, they could look like kids writing, any kind of writing or anything like that, I just lump in the script handwritten category. So you can almost go find one here. You could click on here, just look for anything. Here's one, yesteryear. There's one right there. You could find anything. That's a script font. Now this looks more painterly, almost like you were using a calligraphic pen a little bit, but that's a nice font. One of the things you'll notice about script fonts is their capital letters don't look good together and you should never really put titles with capital letters with script fonts even though people do i see pizza places all the time that use a script font and they put their title or their name in all capital letters and it looks terrible so you don't want to do that and this is a good example of why because their capital letters are usually more decorative and they're meant to kind of set off the other letters which are all kind of connected so that's the way script fonts work. But again, you're not going to see a lot of body copy of script fonts. You might see them in invitations and things like that, but you might see them for logos, headlines, different things. And finally, decorative is kind of everything that's not in that category. Something that you might use in a novelty kind of way or just for a headline or just for a logo, but you wouldn't use for any body copy or anything like that. You, you wouldn't even use on an invitation, I don't think. So I'll make a copy here and just find a decorative font. And they could be, you know, really unique or they could be just different than a typical kind of font. If I just go here and look for something decorative, I could probably find one right away. Here's Wendy 1. Now, Wendy 1, it, it looks like a sans serif, but you can see it has curved letters. It's kind of odd. So there's one right off the bat. And you could probably find any during the list. You could, anything that just looks really unique. Now, it could be a script. It might be script D and it might have serifs on it. It might have a lot of things on it. So it's kind of 
an odd category. I wouldn't use this. I would call this kind of a script font. This is like an old English, but it would still be used in a decorative type manner, but I'll leave it on Wendy one for now. You don't have to use Wendy one. You just have to use something decorative. You have to use something scripty. Use Zillis Lab here. Use Libre Franklin here and use Archivo here. And you're going to use EB Garamond for this one. And you're going to use Crimson Pro for this one. So that's all you're going to do. That's all we're doing here is we're just kind of looking at this. And we're going to use this again to go in and really identify fonts and really look at terminology and things like that. But just to get this started, all I wanted to do right now, um, all I want to do right now is just get you practicing with with Gravit, so you know how to use Gravit. Now, all we're doing here is just pretty much using our pointer. We're not really changing any font. We're not even highlighting anything. We're just using our pointer and making copies and changing the font over here. That's all we're really doing in this exercise. And then when you're done, now you already saved it into your account, your cloud account into a folder, but also if when you see the little asterisk there, that means save it again. So you can click this thing. If this thing isn't grayed out, that means save it. So I'm gonna save it again, and now it's saved. And now what you're gonna do when you're done is you're gonna turn this in. Now make sure that this bouncing little synchronizing thing stops before you share it. There, because sometimes people share things and it didn't get the last save in before you shared it. So make sure it syncs first. So now it's all updated. It's in your cloud, it's saved in your cloud, in your account, if you're not sure if this is your account. There, it says home, that's my account, my Gmail account. So I'll just get out of there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna share it. And now watch this very carefully. You're gonna go here to the share button and if you don't see the share button, some people had an issue with the way their um, browser was set up that you were zoomed in too much. So you can always try and zoom in, use, use um, shift command, I think it's shift command plus or minus, because if you use command plus or minus or control plus or minus, it's just gonna zoom in on the screen. But if you want your browser to zoom in or zoom out, you could see how I went, I made it bigger from my browser and my share button went away. So now I'm gonna do shift command or shift control minus, and now I can see my share button again. So what I'm gonna do is, is click on share. Now this is very important. We're gonna copy this, but before you do this, and I think they changed this from last semester, it says everybody with the link and it says viewer. Now they have a different kind of access now. If you just have viewer, I can look at it, but I can't go into it and change anything or see what you did too much. So make sure you always choose developer. I think that's just gonna be easier because then I could even save your file into mine. When I share files, I use developer. So just use developer all the time. And I think this changed from the last version that we were using in the fall. So make sure you choose developer here and it says developer. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna copy and it's gonna copy this link and then you're gonna go back here, and of course, we're logged out again, so I have to log in. And you're gonna go into coursework, and you're gonna go down here. Now, last time we clicked on this link, now when you turn it in, you're gonna click on this link, which is the assignment. This will take you into the assignment, and all that you're gonna do here is you're gonna add a comment, just click on here, add a comment, and again, watch carefully, you're gonna click on a link. Don't just paste it. You're gonna insert a link, and you're gonna paste it, and you could do Control V, if you're on Windows or Command V on a Mac, or you might be able to right click and choose paste, possibly. You could paste. And you can leave this as text to display. It'll put the same thing in both boxes. But make sure, please make sure, change this to new window because when you leave it on current window and I click on your link, it's very hard to get back to my warrant. So make sure you paste your link in here. Actually, let me go through it one more time. You're gonna click on insert link you're gonna paste your link in here that you just copied from here, and it was on developer, and you pasted it, and then make sure you change open link in new window. Make sure that says new window, please. And then hit save, and it'll look like that, and hit save again, and that's it. And then I'll be able to click on there and just see that you did this. Now, I'm only gonna see something that looks like this, but it's just a little practice for Gravit, and it's just getting you used to working in Gravit, taking a shared file, saving it into your cloud, um, making some copies here of fonts, changing fonts, and then sharing it. That's all we're doing here, and we're also just starting to look at fonts a little bit, looking at the main categories of fonts, two different kinds of serifs, two different kinds of sans serifs, a slab serif, a script, and a decorative. So that's what we're looking at right now. Just a little intro assignment. So that's EX1 font categories, make sure my Warren, you turn it in, make sure you use developer, and then you're good. And that should be it for unit one, other than any reading and videos that I may post. But this is our first hands-on exercise for unit one, and this is the only one we're gonna do for unit one.